Yes, um, my name is Paul Nathorpe and I'm here to represent uh, We Think Activism, which is uh, a festival that is taking place right here, actually from this building and south into uh, the end of, of this old industrial area. And uh, the background for this is, as Andrew already said, I'm from an organization that's called Sayada Samla, you can call it like Uniting Courses, and it's a community of citizens that support each other in taking initiative, where you can change your own life, but also in a way that can change things around you. And at its core, it's really a project that is about creating a new democratic culture. So it's a lot about empowerment, the solutions and stuff, but what we're interested in is really a new narrative about democracy, not being only voting, but also taking action. So at the core of all of this lies really to, to change the discourse about what it means to be a citizen and to create a new self-understanding of the citizen. We very much focused on solutions and how we solve things, but at the core of it lies really the understanding of what participation means and therefore also how we can take ownership and responsibility. And let me just share a story. These three people here is, is Stefan, Andrit and Espen, and uh, they have been on social welfare for a long time and, and have different kind of challenges like Asperger's and, 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 and bipolarity and, and to make ends meet they start dumpster diving. And then Andrew and Stefan met each other in, in the dumpster uh, and uh, they started talking about this reality that they were part of and, and also recognizing that people they know also have a lot of other problems like they can be isolated from society and don't really feel that they're part of the community. So they created this dumpster diving cafe where they use their skills to pick the good food out of the dumpsters and they create this space, they set it up in an urban environment, invite people to be part of it and slowly it formed a community of people, like-minded people that, that supported each other in actually dealing with these challenges that they have. Or another example which also has to do with exclusion is people who have disabilities and usually are excluded from big cultural events like you know we have these runs where 40,000 people each year go in and, and participate in that and, and supporting each other and inviting others in to actually also participate in that or Martin who you will meet in just a second who actually as a citizen created a shared dream around an old structure down here that is uh, the coal bridge and, uh, and, and made people dream with him and, and his partner and, and now it's actually become a cornerstone in development here. Or in a, in a little village not far from here, Alkin, where you know the, the, the grocery store closed and they lost that meeting place and got together as citizens to create a new one because they need the meeting place. You can always go shopping but the place where you get together and talk as neighbors is something that is really important. So the key here is I mean, there's lots of solutions, but the key is really the ownership that the initiatives that we can take as citizens leads to. And it is the cornerstone of democracy, and it is also the, the cornerstone of being able to organize solutions in the way where responsibility is distributed. So this event that we have creating here now is done within a frame that we sort of imagine a city in the city with all the different institutions that, that a city is part of. This is actually the city hall here. And, um, and then we fill it up with what we call everyday activists. So it's these people from all corners of societies that take these initiatives because they have a dream or they suffer a problem, they choose to do something about it in a way that benefits not only themselves, but also others. So we went, we bought this old activist mobile, an old Volvo, and went out and we found them uh, in the city, around the city, and we started portraying them. So this is Christina Luisa. As a student, she created this network of healthcare students that bridge the gap between socially vulnerable people and the healthcare system, both in order to help, but also to learn how can we, as coming doctors and nurses, sort of bridge the gap, uh, the inequality in, in health that exists. Or oh, this guy, Jakob, who, who lives in a village not far from here, where citizens get together to really drive the development of a place where not much happens if they don't do it themselves. So here they're bringing a, an old sculpture from a music festival into their city to really 
make a monument for that movement. Or Ilham, who lives in, in Gallarop, which is a, what we tend to call a ghetto in the West. And she's from Somalia, and she's working with the Somali parents to support them in actually participating in the school life of their children and dreaming of one of these kids one day stepping up and actually becoming member of parliament. So the idea here is to create a new narrative about what it means to be a citizen, because often we are a citizen put in a, in, into a narrative where we have a lot of opinions and needs and we need to be facilitated or activated and all that kind of stuff. But there's a different narrative, which is that people are competent. And uh, through, this, through this event, uh, we have a huge program, 250 events there where, where these everyday activists take the stage and it gets into media and it becomes a story not just about a festival, but about democracy, but in a new light. And, um, and it's taking place right now, so I would really highly recommend to you that uh, when this finishes, just take 10 minutes and go like, uh, spend them walking south from here and just experiment for a few minutes actually the life that is going on. And it's all created by people that know it's important, they show up and they have built this, this community that is full of life, lasts for three days and there's nobody getting paid a single dime to do this. So thank you very much for your attention. Paul, just before you disappear, can I just ask you one tiny question? You know, we've met lots of people from City Hall, from institutions while we've been in town over the last couple of days. Where's the little bit of the, the connection and also the friction between you and, say, the people who sit in City Hall? I would say there's a huge connection because um, um, in doing this, obviously, we need people to support us and we need, and it, that's in many ways. Um, it's, it's just the, the flexibility that we draw upon and actually taking this whole area and turning it into like a city in the city. That's a, an important connection. So that happens through dialogue and through actually creating also a shared vision for this. Because somehow we are in, in, the, in the eyes of, of a lot of the people who are responsible for that area also helping them create a new dream of what this could become. So that's the common resource we have and that's actually what we use to create this together with City Hall. So the activist can be sitting in City Hall. The activism, new activism, doesn't just have to be a challenge to the system. It is, it should be a challenge put to the system, but in a way, and I think the new activism, because the old activism is maybe an activism where usually you would step up and be angry at someone, or, or just very discontent, and you would try to make those in power change their way. Um, by protesting. The new activism is one where you, you see something is missing and you start building it. And in the process you start engaging, collaborating, working together with and challenging those who are in power. But what you ultimately look for is to actually through that be able to form a new kind of alliance. And what you insist on is also having authority and competence as a citizen. And that's, I think that's really, I mean, that's from our side what we would like to challenge the, the existing system with. Paul, amazing. So a round of applause for Paul. Thank you.